Hi, my name is Larry Smith. I'm with Festival Power Tools. And today we're going to talk about sanders. Random orbit sanders, Rotex sanders, and some of the common mistakes we all make while using these sanders. We're going to start with Festool's ETS 150-3 random orbit sander. This, in my opinion, is the smoothest random orbit sander made today. It runs flatter laterally, so there's less vibration. These were not invented for woodworkers. These come from the automotive industry called DA sanders. DA sanders uh, is dual action, two actions. Now, the two actions are your orbit and your full circle sweep. That's the rotation of the sander. What I want to show you now is the orbit. This is something many people don't understand, so we're going to put a little dot on the bottom of my abrasive. The purpose for the dot is to show you the orbit. You typically can't see it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually hold the pad because it's called random. So as I hold the pad, you can actually see the dot. Now let me slow this down just a little bit so that when you watch the dot, watch the orbit appear. You can actually see the orbital action of the sander. Then when I release, the rotation starts, and that's your dual action. That's how random orbit sanders work. So we see swirl marks. This is the co biggest common mistake we all make with random orbit sanders. We apply too much pressure because you can hold the pad or stop the pad. That's why they're called random. The word random will get you into trouble. It's a big breakthrough in sanding for woodworkers, but it will get you into trouble because when you stop the rotation, you get the swirl marks that we see right here. Okay, now we're gonna talk about another sander. Both six inch sanders, this is a dual mode sander called Rotex. Rotex is a trade name by Festool. It also describes the action, the aggressive action of a driven Rotex sander. So first we have the two switches on top. This is your dual mode. So now we're in random orbit, just like we were with the other sander. So random orbit, if you want to hold the pad or you'll see that you can hold the pad, and then it'll spin, but you can stop it. That's random. But we're not gonna use random. This is a Rotex sander, and I wanna show the features of how good and fast Rotex sanding works. So we're gonna switch over to what's referred to as coarse sanding, but wait till you see the finished product. So you hear the click, now you're, you're locked in. I am not gonna put my thumb on the pad. You can't stop it. Now you have virtually a disc sander with a driven orbital, DA sander, okay? So if you watch closely, I've got it on low speed, you can see the action. Okay? So it's not a disc sander, it's a Rotex dual action sander. We're going to use a sander that will sand as fast as a belt sander, but yet produce the most beautiful finish you can get with a hand sander and I'd like to say it's going to do it four times faster than your random orbit sanders. Now, we do have to pay attention to grits. There are basics that we can't ignore. You still have to go through the grits. But with Rotex, depending on your material, the hardness, you, you can skip grits. But never skip grits on the low end. We're going to start with 40 grit to really scratch this beautiful piece of black walnut. And then we're going to bring it up to a beautiful finish. But if I start with 40, I can't go from 40 to 150. I'm gonna go 40, 60, 80, 120. If you skip grits on the low end, you will not get deep enough to get those deep scratches out. That's a common mistake that many sanders make. So let's start with the 40 grit in Rotex. Now we're going to switch to 60 grit 
And if you notice while I'm sanding with Rotex, because you have a driven action, the word random doesn't come into play. So we're not massaging the top. We have a methodical way to sand. Watch my directional sand. We're going to go up this way. Then we're going to go this way. Change grits. Another thing that we've talked about in our training classes is the fact that is it right to start your sander on or off the work? So as we do this next grit, which is now 80 grit, I want you to understand you should start your sander on the work so you're not gouging into your work when you bring the pad to the, to the work. So we start the sander on and when we finish, watch, I'll remove it before I shut it off. Another way you can end up with swirl marks is to stop that sander while you're sanding. Okay, so now we're going to 120. Now, when I get to this point, 120 grit, I want to show you in a little demonstration, a good visual of just how fast we're sanding with this Rotex sander and how fast it can sand. Now, over on this edge, if you watch, this is 120 grit paper. Watch the cutting action. There's a sander that's sanding as fast as a belt sander. But wait till you see the finished product. So with that aside, let's start our sander on the work. Okay, so now our next grit is 180 so we're skipping 150 we're starting to skip grits on the high end now and you can do it because it's more micro sanding it's not the deep scratch that you get with your 40s and 60s and 80s now we we, we also want to talk about dust extraction with these sanders so i want to give you a nice little bit uh visual here again remember this is 180 grit now we don't have our dust extraction hooked up watch the difference So if, if you're thinking that you don't need dust extraction, if you're not pulling these particles off, you're regrinding those back into the surface and you'll never get the best surface you can possibly get because you're hindering your whole sanding process right here. Watch the difference without and with dust extraction. Here we're going to go from 180 to 360. Now, because I'm jumping through the 200s, I'm going to make one extra pass. But then we're going to get into finer grits, and you're going to see that grain just get more pronounced. Now you're really starting to see the, the uh, pores of the grain. Everything's going to be more detailed. And so when you have your better materials, you want to continue and do proper sanding to make sure your piece looks as the best it can. So we're going to end up at 1500. Right now we have 400. Then we're going to jump to 1500. This is our last grit and then we're going to go to the next phase and by the way look at the pad 
Air actually comes out of the center hole because it's pulled in through the holes of the pad. There's better airflow. But the, it's, it's extracted through your center holes and anything that's left is picked up by the outside holes, but it never gets to the outside of the sander. So if you keep the pad flat on the surface, you'll virtually have no dust. Let's finish our last grip. This sander will sand as fast as a belt sander, right? Well, look how the grain is so pronounced. We're going to put some polish on and you'll get to see if there are any sanding marks because it will expose all the imperfections of our sanding. So remember, a sander that sands like a belt sander can produce this finish and do it four times faster. Now we're gonna use the Rotex sander to do some polishing. We're gonna apply polish and then we're gonna buff it out using this machine which is really the third application we can use with this machine. It's not only a fine sander or a rough sander but it's also the, one of the best polishers I've ever used. So to start the process we're gonna use the uh, what we term our orange sponge. It's a medium density and it will allow us to get into different cracks and crevices but it'll also work good on flat surfaces. So we put this on just like our sandpaper and now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take our dust extraction off because we're not sanding anymore, we're polishing. So we take our dust extraction, our hose off, and we're going to turn the machine down to the lowest speed because I don't want to sling this polish all over and I want to use this as like a hand rub finish. It's doing all the work for me. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this polish and we're going to apply a little bit on the sponge. We have just a small piece to work with here, so this won't take long. If it was a big piece, I might apply it on the surface, but you'll get the idea of how this works. We're just going to apply the polish low speed in Rotex. So we've applied our polish and now we're going to put on our sheepskin bonnet to buff the surface out. And this is real sheepskin. For those that don't know, Festool uses better products. This is not synthetic. It will not leave micro scratches. This is real sheepskin that can be cleaned. So this is a very uh, uh, high quality polishing bonnet and we're using Festool Polish, of course. But now, unlike our sponge, where we ran it on low speed, we're gonna stay in Rotex, but now we're gonna turn the speed up all the way. Because even if you're doing a car, boat, uh, uh, painted finish, soft material, this will not melt the surface because it's only spinning at 700 RPM, but still in the driven Rotex mode. So let's go ahead and, and buff this out. So we've wrapped it up with the Rotex. You've learned about the dual action, the orbit with the full circle sweep. When you trust that dual action, it will erase your swirl marks while you're sanding.